Accountability There is a day that every believer, every man and woman will have to be accountable for their actions. Each of us will have to take responsibility about what we did and what we did not do. We'll have to answer for every word spoken, every thought in our minds and even our actions and deeds. Matthew 12 verse 36 says, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. This is accountability. Romans 14 verse 12 says, So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. Once again we're told that we will have to answer to the Lord. And so the question becomes, how am I living? Am I regulating my thoughts? Am I taking this thought over here and saying you don't belong in my mind? Be cast away. Am I filtering my words? Do I stop, pause and think if the words I am about to speak will be helpful or harmful? Are you living in such a way that you know you will be accountable? We all have decisions to make. And we make all kinds of decisions each and every day and the decisions we make affect us in different ways. Someone can make a decision today that will affect their financial status for the next few years. Someone else will make small decisions each and every day, a decision about what to eat and what not to eat. And those decisions will affect their health in years to come. Every decision has a consequence to it. The Bible tells us, do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. And the reality is, our daily decisions are building and influencing where each of us will spend in eternity. When you decide not to pray. When you decide not to meditate on the word of God. What does that do to you? What is that doing for you? When you decide to speak a harsh word out of anger. When you decide to drift in those unclean thoughts. You will have to be accountable on the day of judgment. The Amplified Translation for Matthew 7 verse 13 and 14 says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad and easy to travel is the path that leads the way to destruction and eternal loss. And there are many who enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow and difficult to travel is the path that leads the way to everlasting life. And there are a few who find it. Have you decided to walk on the narrow road where it's difficult to travel but it leads to everlasting life? The Bible says there are few, few who find it. Or have you decided to walk on the broad road where you will always have your way without limitations. You decide. You decide to pursue the pleasures of this world or the discipline of righteousness. You decide to pursue money, to pursue power and material things or to pursue godliness. These are all decisions that we have to make. And when it comes to the forces that are fighting us and influencing our decisions, there is the flesh, the carnal man, the body. 
and that is always trying to pull you to the broad road, to the road filled with sin, to the road that fills you with pleasure. This old nature is something that you and I are born with, and regardless of how saved you think you are, there is always work to be done to eradicate the power of the carnal man. There is always work to be done to eradicate the power and the sinful tendencies of this body. The flesh is at war against the spirit, and your spirit is the part of you that yearns for fellowship with Jesus Christ. It's the part of you that desires him and his presence. And this war between body and spirit is best described in Galatians 5 verse 16 to 18, which says, But I say, walk by the spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. And so the struggle for us as Christians is centered around the question, how do I walk in the spirit and not in the flesh? How can I guard myself, how can I protect myself so that I am walking by faith and not by sight? How do I seek the Holy Spirit and respond to his guidance, to his voice, to his leadership when I am surrounded by the many temptations in this world? These are all questions that we have to ask with the view that we will have to be accountable for our decisions. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, And you will seek me and find me, when you search for me with all your heart. Beloved, if you seek the Lord, you will find him. We often spend so much energy we spend so much effort and time seeking people, seeking attention, seeking money, when all of these things are temporary. They do nothing for us. They do nothing for our eternal destiny. They are all things that will pass away. And so if we chase the things on this earth, what will we say on the day of judgment? And so I encourage you today to get to the point where you realize that you need to seek Jesus Christ before you seek the things of this earth, before you chase any worldly things. Pursue Jesus Christ. Call on the name that is above every other name, because in him you will find the protection that you need you will find peace and tranquility. You will find a God who is mighty. I encourage you to call on him because Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Psalm 50 verse 15 says, Call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honour me. And so I encourage you, in all that you do, be mindful that you will have to be accountable on the day of judgement. You will have to answer whether you sought after Jesus Christ or you sought after the things of this world. Make the decision today to live for Jesus Christ, because he says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So let your hope 
be found in the Lord.